In this video, we're going to talk about the different phases of matter. These are sometimes also referred to as the states of matter. So, in the world around us, there are all different kinds of stuff. And there's a scientific word for stuff. We call it matter. Matter is stuff. It's anything that takes up space and has mass. Now, has mass might sound a little unfamiliar, so that just means that it weighs something. All this stuff takes up space, it weighs something, so it's matter. Now, if we look at all these different examples of matter, we can put almost everything into one of three categories. Matter can be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. These categories are known as the phases of matter. Now, you might also know that there's some unusual phases of matter, like plasma, but we're not going to worry about those here. Now, I bet you're pr pretty familiar with each of these phases from everyday life. But we're going to look at them in a little bit more of a scientific or technical way. We'll first look at some of the big picture characteristics of the different phases, and then we'll look at a microscopic view of each phase. We'll start with solids. Here's some examples. A cube of metal, a rock, a bar of gold. Now, we all sort of know what a solid is, but how would you really define it, right? A solid is hard? A solid is solid? Well, technically speaking, we'd say that what makes a solid unique is that it has a definite shape and a definite volume. Definite means that it's certain, that it can't easily change. For all these solids, unless we bang them or crush them, the shape isn't going to change. That's what makes it definite. And volume refers to the amount of space that something takes up. And for a solid, volume is definite too. For example, the cube has these dimensions of one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. Its volume is one cubic centimeter. Move this cube around, roll it around, the volume won't change. It's definite. Now another important characteristic of solids is that they're incompressible. This means that you cannot squeeze them into a smaller volume or a smaller amount of space. You can try, you can exert force, but it's not going to happen. So, these are the big picture characteristics that define a solid. Now, let's zoom into the solid and get a microscopic view. If you could zoom into anything billions and billions of times, you'd see that it's made of tiny particles. And for our purposes right now, we'll show these as little circles or little balls. Here are the particles that make up this solid. There are a couple things to point out. First, we see that they're closely packed together. And we can't show it here, but these particles would actually be moving. They'd be vibrating in place, sort of quivering. Here's a diagram, just moving back and forth. But these particles are fixed or stuck in one spot. They're not moving around. They're not moving to new locations. They're just vibrating or jiggling in place. That's very important here for the behavior of particles in a solid. Now, the way these particles behave, that affects the big picture characteristics. Okay, so for example, the reason why solids have a definite shape is because the particles in the solid are fixed in one spot. They're stuck in one position, right? In order for the cube to change shape, the particles that make it up would have to move into new locations. Imagine a brick house. The bricks are kind of like the particles. You can't easily push a brick house into a new shape because the individual particles, the individual bricks, can't move. It's the same way with the particles in a solid, definite shape. And as we said earlier, solids are incompressible. Well, now you can see why. There's not really any extra space between the particles. 
So even if you exert force, you can't pack the particles more closely together, so you can't compress the solid. So here's everything that we've learned about solids so far. We'll build a nice little table for the different phases of matter. And we'll move on to liquids. Okay, so here we've got some. What makes a liquid a liquid? Well, technically, a liquid has an indefinite shape, but a definite volume. Let's see what that means. A liquid flows freely. It takes the shape of its container, like this flask here. The liquid has the shape of whatever container it's in. So every time we pour this liquid into a new container, like a glass or a bottle or a beaker, it takes on a different shape. That's why we say that shape is indefinite. But the liquid still has a definite volume. For instance, in each of these containers here, the shape changes, but the volume, the amount of space that the liquid takes up, is the same, 750 milliliters. The volume doesn't change, it's definite, even though the shape does. And liquids are incompressible. This sometimes surprises people, but it's true. If you put a liquid in a syringe like this and you seal the end, you cannot squeeze this plunger down. The liquid just won't compress. So you can't squeeze a liquid into a smaller volume. And obviously these big picture characteristics that we talked about are true for all liquids. Now, let's zoom in and see what the particles would look like in a liquid. Now, compared to the particles of a solid, you can see that the liquid particles are still pretty close together. But there's a big difference in movement here. The particles in a liquid are constantly moving around. In a solid, they're stuck vibrating in place. But in a liquid, they kind of swim or wiggle past each other. You can kind of see that here in the diagram. And as before, there's a link between the behavior of the particles and these characteristics. Liquids have an indefinite shape because the particles can move around. They can move into new locations. That's how liquids pour. All the particles just kind of tumble over each other and then move into a new shape or a new layout. But we can see why liquids are still incompressible like solids. The particles might be a little bit looser than in a solid, but there's still not really much space between them. So it's hard to squish them together any closer they remain incompressible. And here now is everything that we've talked about with liquids. We'll move on to our last phase of matter, gases. Now, gases can be a little bit weird because most of them are invisible, like air. Only a few gases have a color that you can see. And sometimes people feel that gases aren't really matter, but they definitely are. Gases take up space, Think of this balloon. And gases have mass. They weigh something. A balloon full of air weighs more than an empty balloon. So gases fulfill both of these characteristics. They're definitely matter. Okay, so now for some specific characteristics. A gas has an indefinite shape and an indefinite volume. Like a liquid, the shape of a gas will change to fit any container that it's in, so that's why the shape is indefinite. But the volume of gas also changes. Right now, the gas is taking up the volume of this flask, but if we remove the top, the gas would expand. It would come out to fill up a larger volume. Gases can expand or contract to fill a container. That's why the volume is also indefinite. And unlike the other two phases of matter that we talked about, gases are indeed compressible. In a situation like this, you exert some force on the top of this syringe and it compresses the gas. You can squeeze it into a smaller volume. And this is a summary of those characteristics. Now, let's zoom in on our gas. Check it out. The particles are really far away from each other. 
And we'd see that they are in constant rapid motion. They're flying around really fast. Gases have an indefinite shape, just like liquids, because the particles can move around into new locations. They also have an indefinite volume. They can expand and contract, and that's because these particles are far apart and they're constantly flying around. When they have more space to take up, the particles just fly further apart, or give them less space and they can come in closer. And now, you can see why solids and liquids have a definite volume. The particles are kind of stuck closely together and they don't separate. They don't really come apart. Even though the particles in a liquid move around, they don't really spread far apart from each other. So these two phases of matter can't expand to take up more space. And remember, they're not compressible either, so they can't contract to take up less space. And that leads us to compressibility for gases. Gases are compressible because the particles are so far apart, there's lots of extra space between them, and it's very easy to squeeze them into a smaller volume. Here's our complete chart. And now, let's do a quick review of everything we talked about. First, matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. It's physical stuff. And these three phases of matter have different characteristics. A solid has a definite shape and a definite volume. Its particles are closely packed together. They vibrate in place, but they don't move around. A solid is hard to compress. A liquid has an indefinite shape, but a definite volume. It takes the shape of its container. Its particles are close together, but they do move around. Liquids can flow, but they're hard to compress. And finally, gases have no definite shape and no definite volume. They take the shape and the volume of their container. The particles in a gas are very far apart and they're flying around really quickly. Because there's a lot of space between the particles, gases are easy to compress. So, that's an introduction to the three main phases of matter.